it is, song number one on today's MSI. Ian, what do you think of song number one today? Charming little number. It sort of took me back to the sort of uh, old, what well, I imagine sort of old-time Americana, you know, sort of a bunch of old boys sitting around in the bar, honky-tonk piano, someone with a fiddle, just all happened to be there singing the songs they know and have sung time and time and time again. Visually, great piece. Really, really did like it. Um, it has got a very lo-fi old recording feel to it. Now, I don't know if this is a really old song, uh, it's not one I recognise, but it's like an old standard or anything like that. Um, so if they, they've aimed to do this digitally, and it's actually a modern song recorded in that way, they've done it really, really, really well. Uh, felt the vocal was a bit low in the mix, um, if I'm going to get critical about this, because uh, I would like to hear the words. The performances, though, they were fantastic. I don't know. To me, this is just a, a really charming old song i don't want to critique the mix too much i think the, the, the mix is perfect for what it's trying to be and for where it's trying to be in time and for when it's done in time if that makes sense um i love the honky tonk piano that was a lovely touch all the harmonies the fiddle just playing underneath yeah it's all there it sounds true to what it is i mean uh, is there a market for it these days i doubt it very much Probably work very very well in uh, in film um, for a sort of an old old style film yeah. or something like that. But um, this really is a song that is what it is. It's it's nothing groundbreaking. It sounds old. It's if it's been recorded digitally and it's been very well done. Um, I like it. Yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Really. All right. I appreciate it, Ian. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, your thoughts on uh, number one. I uh, agree very much, though, with uh, Ian on uh, most of his points. Uh, he almost left me with nothing to say, as a matter of fact. Um, that, 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 it, that's never happened before. No, it's not, and it never will, so <laughs> shut up and let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> Next! Um, if this was recorded with the intent to give it that um, oh I forget that movie that had two big stars in it and they were brothers and they had this type of music all throughout it um, oh, brother, excuse me oh, oh, oh brother where oh, art brother. thou oh. yeah um as much creativity went into that as went into this. Um, they've captured the era. They've um, made little mistakes in the mix, too minor to even mention. Um, the gentleman's vocal, yeah, you know, you'll never hear me say, you know, it's too loud unless it's you know, overbearingly blocking everything in the track. Um, and it did definitely, to me, had that live feel. It's not like, uh, let's go to the library and uh, find old country toothless man sing song. You know, um, it's it very, very um, risky to do a song like that in this day and age because uh, uh, as Ian said I don't know if there's a market for it um, but I suspect somewhere there is because um, Christian music has exploded um, just even deep deep southern uh, traditional music has, has exploded also so I find Few faults. Uh, I admire the man that put it all together and had the vision for it. All right. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate your thoughts on it. Let's take a uh, gander at what Bill has to say about it. Bill, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, song number one? Well, it's funny it brought up the movie because as the track started, as I heard the vocal, that's all I could think of was, 
you know, uh, go sing into a can and they'll give you five dollars <laughs> uh, from Brother Where Art Thou? Because it really does have that sound and feel. Um, and it, it, I guess it comes back down to the whole intent thing. If that's the kind of lo-fi feel that we're going for, they uh, they pulled it off rather nicely. I think there's a couple of things they could have done. I, I, I think when you're going back and trying to recreate uh, the recorded sound of another era, there are things that you can do now to, uh, to improve on it. I agree that the lead vocal was a little bit buried in the mix, um, and there are ways to, uh, to bring that forward. Uh, I, I keep thinking about the, uh, the CeeLo Green big hit from the summer, the Fuck You song. Um, and when that organ comes in, the organ is about a mile wide, but you can still hear the vocal real clear over the top of it. So there's some, some recording techniques they could have done to keep that feel and put the vocal a little bit more on top. Um, other than that, uh, is there a market for it? You know, even Christian music is pretty slick these days. You know, it's uh, this really falls more under the the heading of Americana or uh, right. uh, roots than I would even call it uh, anything that that your your uh, basic evangelical market is going to uh, to embrace. So um, it was real interesting. I haven't heard anything like it. It was it was funny. There was a little bit of a disconnect for me um, when it started because I heard that kind of roadhouse piano thing at the beginning and thought, okay, we're going into a blues number. Mm -hmm. And then the vocal came in and it was a gospel number. And at first it was a little jarring, but I had to, to remember, you know, when, uh, when rock and roll started, these guys were playing in the roadhouse on Saturday night and in the church on Sunday morning. So, Yeah, that, that's very yeah. true. That's a real good point. <clears throat> now, do you guys uh, think this was uh, recorded live based on the sound or, or was it something that was pieced together in the studio? I honestly don't think it matters. It, it created the vibe and the feel. Um, knowing how they do it is one of the great challenges of, of working in the music industry. It's what makes uh, great engineers who can do things and it, uh, or lousy engineers that just get lucky. <laughs> I think you've probably got a bit of both, to be honest. I think you've probably got, uh, you know, maybe a live feel with some overdubs. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. It does definitely have that live in the studio feel. Um, uh, you know, some of my favorite records are live. I don't know if you guys have ever heard the Shelby Lynn record, uh, Just a Little Leaven, mm -hmm. uh, which is all a bunch of Dusty Springfield covers. It's a brilliant record, and that you can tell just by the arrangements and everything else, it has to be live in the studio. There's no other way they could have pulled it off some of the stops and starts. Um, that definitely had a live in the studio feel. I think that maybe the, the fiddle may have been overdubbed, but I have a feeling that the piano and those vocals were probably happening all at once. All right. All right, guys, I appreciate your thoughts on that. Let's head right into number mm -hmm. two after I introduce this one. So uh, the artist that did this song is named Henry V. Adams, and it's called I'll Be Somewhere Listening For My Name. And uh, that's the name of that track. So let's see if we can get things. So we've had a bit of an issue here at MSI. Rich has lost power, and uh, we don't know if he's all right. We think he may have been abducted by aliens, but keep an eye on the show, and we'll bring back reports on that one. So we need to do Song of the Week, Bill. Um, so, what's your opinion on some of the week? Well, uh, it, it's kind of ironic that we had a power failure and you know connection issues at the end because if there's a common thread running through all three songs, it's kind of a failure to connect on some level. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I, song number two left me cold. Um, song number three, I'm gonna, I'm, I wouldn't vote for it just because I hate the fact that everything's so in your face. So even it's it's kind of a default vote, um, but I would say song number one would be my choice for song of the week. Song number one, okay, so that's your choice. And I'll be honest with you, I mean, having looked at all the songs myself, uh, number three really should be song of the week. I, I wanted it to be. Yes. I, you know, as it was going, it's like, okay, I want, but it just didn't, the chorus didn't go anywhere. It needs a hook. People need to learn how to write proper hooks again. Uh, agreed. So um, I think personally, from my opinion as well, 
I'm going to go with song number one. It was charming. It was interesting. If it was done this day and age, it was very well done for what it was meant to be. And uh, from my point of view, song of the week. So I'm going to say thank you now to Bill for joining well, thanks us. Thanks for having me. Side. Sorry about the little technical issue here at the end, but no power is quite a major one, I feel. Yeah, I kind of, and, and shit happens, right? I had, I had a blast. I'll come back anytime you guys want me. You'll be more than welcome, Bill. And um, do you want to just give a few uh, websites out that you want people to go and visit to check you out again? If you're, uh, if you're uh, an audio guy, check out soundprolive.ning.com and be on the lookout for the full website. Um, and uh, follow me at L2P Guy, L number two P Guy on Twitter, and uh, we'll uh, send out blasts to our content. And you can subscribe to everything from there. Excellent stuff. Well, cheers, Bill, for joining us. Again, sorry for the little power outage there, but we'll work that one out in the future. We'll get lots of batteries or something. <laughs> and now, yeah, as long as he hasn't been abducted by aliens. That's the main thing, as you know, yeah. there's. We're just hoping that's not the case. It's prevalent. He's in corn country, you know? Oh, it, it could happen. There's going to be a crop circle out there. Rich is going to be disappeared. <laughs> it's all going to be messy. Anyway, thanks for joining us, and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks very much, Ian. Cheers, Bill. Bye. So, Tom, Rich has been abducted by aliens, we think, and uh, Bill and I have just had a quick chat, which we've recorded, done Song of the Week. We both have gone for number one. We think that's the most charming and... and best for what it is what do you reckon for some of the week i also agree with number one they went for a mood uh it moved me it connected uh definitely number one excellent stuff so that makes song number one whose name i haven't got to hand because i don't know what it is uh song of the week so i might I'm, be able to get that for you you might be able to get that for me that would be fantastic tom so, uh, sorry about the problems today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Rich has had a major power outage, possibly kidnapped by aliens. We'll let you know. Keep, keep a look on the internet and uh, on our website, and we'll let you know. What's the name of the first band, Tom? Okay, here it goes. I'll be somewhere listening for... Oh, that's all it says on the, the, I downloaded it, and I thought it would say, uh, Henry V. Adams. Henry V. Adams, with Somewhere I'll Be Listening? Uh, yeah, I'll be, lis so I'll be somewhere listening for my name. I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Henry V. Adams, ladies and gentlemen, song of the week this week. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, Rich will be back next week. Hopefully, he hasn't been probed too badly. Um, and uh, from me and Tommy... And uh, from Bill as well. See you later. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.